to welcome to our sisterhood live chat. You know, during these calls, this is a, a conversation that matters. We don't ever want to talk about things that don't matter. So we just want to welcome you to our sisterhood chat tonight. It's good to be back with you for another conversation. Um, so I hope you're listening somewhere comfortable. Grab a snack, grab a warm drink, um, get something to write with, get a pen and a notebook and, and get ready for some learning moments tonight. Um, I believe you're going to hear a lot of great things. Remember that even though all of this is happening to all of us at the same time, God is still speaking to his daughters, mm -hmm. you know, and by now you've noticed there's a new face on the screen. Um, we want to welcome Quanisha Johnson. She's a licensed counselor tonight to our chat. And she's going to help us understand the body and the mind as it relates to what we're all going through right now. Quanisha is the founder of Bridging the Gap Counseling and Educational Services in Bethlehem. Welcome, Quanisha, to the conversation. Hi, ladies. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Yes, awesome. All right, ladies, how's everybody doing tonight? Good. We're all good. We're all good. Awesome. All right, okay. so we're going to pick up where we left off last week. Last week, we had a great time. We, we got a lot of comments that people were listening, and they were just enjoying the conversation. And, and I hope that this is blessing you. I hope that, you know, this is reaching people and just bringing comfort and bringing encouragement to you. Um, so as we begin tonight, let's just pick up where we left off last week. You know, how is everybody doing with this stay at home order, this social distancing? We're, we're about to enter week four. Mm -hmm. And so what's the everyday looking like? What's the struggle looking like for you guys? For me, it's, uh, I describe it as like stages of mourning. Mm -hmm. uh, so last week I was just very kind of like feeling really blessed. I'm home with my kids. You know, I'm getting to mm -hmm. see them grow older and, you know, just learning. Siona Blair is every day she's learning something new. And then the next day it's like, there's fear. And then the next day after that, I'm anxious. And this week I've just been really sad. Like this is really happening to us. So I, I just, I feel like every day, I never know how I'm gonna wake up. <laughs> um, the reality of everything that's happening uh, comes differently, so. Thank you for really sharing that, Denise. That's like real and authentic. And I know that, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of us can say me too, to the fear and just to the, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. A lot of those feelings that you just shared. And how about you, Brianni? Um, I would say, yeah, I could definitely say me too, to what Denise is saying. Um, I mean, I think right now I'm in a moment of, um, of peace. Um, right now, I think I've definitely put some things in the place that right now I, I do feel a little bit at peace despite kind of what's going on. But um, I am still seeing so many people around me um, that are just being affected by this in so many different ways, um, whether it's, you know, parents not having their children no longer in daycare and school, um, so they're not used to, you know, the structured days kind of being shaken up for their children and like how that's affecting them. Um, even some people that, you know, maybe rely on like AA meetings and things like that and them not having that accessible to them. Um, to be able to go to those like therapy sessions in person. Um, some, a few mothers this week um, actually gave birth that I know of. Um, so just kind of seeing those situations happening um, and just me, myself, and a lot of the other adults that I've been speaking to, just their concern. I go to work every day still, still normal schedule. Um, so just the concern naturally with coming back and forth, um, still coming back to my family. Um, and even some family members being impacted by, you know, them having their personal businesses um, obviously have to close down and employees they're having to just currently like lay off. Um, and then I think the biggest one for me is seeing all the people affected by um, being affectionate and being social butterflies and now being confined to like six feet apart, you know, social distancing. <laughs> Um, so I think I'm just seeing it more around me more if I had to say anything. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Brianni. Yeah, you, Sophie. I, um, I think the biggest thing, I went through an emotional few days um, just this past week. Um, even I think on one of our prayer calls in the morning, I was tearful, it, you know, just, and I don't really, I can't really explain to you all that I was dealing with at that moment, but definitely knew there was some um, strong emotions during that time frame. I feel more at peace these last couple of days, but I've also gotten to kind of sit home um, because I'm still out and about working 
at Target and, and at the hospital. So because I'm still kind of in the mix, I feel like I carry a little bit of of the fear a little bit just because I don't want to bring anything home. My mother-in-law lives here. So, you know, just kind of, that's kind of always on the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I'll say too, just um, because I work on the emergency room with the mental health patients, I think what we're seeing a lot of, um, the biggest thing has been a lot of feeling of panic, a lot of feelings of mm -hmm. anxiousness, um, just not knowing what to do. Um, I hear a lot of my mind's constantly racing, um, you know, and even some extreme things of people even wanting to hurt themselves because they're not sure what to do. So we're really seeing a gamut of emotions during this time um, with the people that are coming into the emergency room for just mental health help. So, you know, it's obviously something that's, um, if it's affecting us on, it, everyone's being affected on different levels, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And so we're all at different mm -hmm. points. And so it is something we have to take serious, even for our own mental health. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I've been seeing. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for sharing, so uh, Sophie. Um, you know, I think a, another quick question that we'd like to throw in here is, um, you know, we know for for so many, COVID nineteen can can be, and you know, a traumatic event. And so, how how do we define trauma? How do we define you know this in people's lives, uh, Quanisha? First, um, I want to say, ladies, um, thank you so much for sharing your experience. And I, I know that people listening to this are going to, it's going to resonate with them because it's, it's absolutely normal to feel everything that you're feeling. Because if we think about this crisis, there's no point of reference. Mm -hmm. If you are a mother and you give birth and you know your mother gave birth to you, you can call your mom up and say, mom, I'm getting ready to give birth. What should I expect? Mm -hmm. And she can give you her experience, but a perspective related to giving birth. This is unlike anything we've ever experienced. So we're going to have anxiety. Mm -hmm. And anxiety really is just the body's response to stress. And it looks different for everyone. Um, Denise described a little bit of what is grief. There's a sense of loss. We think of grief as someone dying and people are dying and it's very serious, but grief is about loss. You go through different stages of it. You're in denial. You're at peace one day with it, right? There's bargaining. There's so many different things that go along with grief because we are grieving the loss of our security, um, the security that we knew of, of, of our livelihoods, of just our loved ones, of every, everything that we knew is no longer that way. And it happens very suddenly. So I want to validate your feelings and validate what you're going through because it's very common, and I talk to people, to experience everything that you're feeling. Um, you mentioning just feeling as though um, the people around you are suffering, and then you, you're, you have empathy and you feel that feeling. Um, because in your home, everyone may be safe and healthy, but then with that empathy that you're feeling, especially when you are an empathic person, you are caring about those around you. And that's what this virus dealing with is about. It's about others. We wash our hands, we wear masks, we do those things because this crisis is not just about us, it's about everyone else. So I just wanted to like get, put that out there and validate those feelings that they're totally normal feelings. It's what we're all experiencing, no matter if you're a doctor, you're the nurse, of course, if you are a therapist, if you're a teacher, if you're a daycare owner, no matter what, we're, we're all experiencing some variation of that and it varies from day to day depending on the circumstance. Um, Carmen, you asked about trauma. Mm -hmm. So trauma really is about experiencing a serious loss that gives us a threat to our well-being. Now that well-being could be your physical well-being or your emotional well-being, which I think we're all experiencing a sense of both, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're feeling as though yeah. we, and trauma I want to share also, just to let you ladies know, that trauma is about perception and not necessarily reality all the time. It's what you perceive to be a traumatic event because it looks different for everyone. So I want everyone to understand it's the serious loss and threat to the physical and emotional well being. And that is what's going on with COVID 19. It's, it's that loss, it's a threat to your well being because, as I said earlier, everything has changed and it's changed suddenly, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, and I, I think you touched on this a little bit, but maybe we can go a little further. How, how mm -hmm. does trauma relate to COVID-19? Like what is actually happening to people? You know, uh, as I was talking to my husband this week, we were saying mm -hmm. how, how so many people who've never struggled with anxiety, struggled with panic attacks, struggled with fear at, at this level are now all of a sudden having, you know, some, some situations come up. And mm -hmm. they've never struggled before, you know, and so, you know, maybe you can speak to that as far as like, what is going on with uh, people and, 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 you know, figuring out what's happening to them in light of COVID-19 and this trauma, uh, this threat to our well-being. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now, what's going on is that we're all in survival mode. That's what it feels like, <laughs> because you're not doing your daily activities. You're, you're trying to survive. You're, you're doing everything that you know possible more than you've ever done to survive. So you, this, this, this uh, feeling that you're feeling, because you're operating in survival mode, you're operating in the part of your brain for survival. Mm -hmm. So think about, I'll give this example uh -huh. to, to bring it home. Think about being in the forest and you're in the forest and there's a bear. And so a bear is coming. So you have to decide whether you're going to do, you're gonna run you're going to um, freeze um, or you're going to fight against the bear. So you're, you're operating in your fight, flight, or freeze mode. So your body, is, uh, your, your, um, your trauma response is in your, your automatic nervous system. So it's an automatic response. You're not going to really think of it. You're just going to do. You're going to do. So that bear and that is, when it comes to that situation, you're going to do whatever you need to do to survive. You're going to, I've heard of someone once saying that if you face a bear, you put your arms up big, you know, like you're, you know, ah, like you're scared, like you're not scared of the bear and um, the bear might back down. So you're going to operate in those areas that fight, flight or freeze response. But think about dealing with COVID-19. We're operating in this response every day. Mm -hmm. You're not operating in the forest on a daily basis. If you ever go camping or hiking or whatever, that might be like with trauma, it may be a single event situation with trauma. With COVID-19 right now, as you said earlier, we're going into our fourth week of this. So when we're operating in that part of our brain, it changes everything in that survival mode. We are, we are more stressed. We can't think because we're operating in, in the form of our brain, the part of our brain, um, there's a part called the amygdala. So we're operating there. And that's the emotional part of that brain, the, the, the part of our brain for survival and not operating in what's called the prefrontal cortex that allows us to have empathy, make decisions. And so because we're dealing with day-to-day, -day, people are losing jobs. People, as Briani said earlier, are figuring out what to do in terms of um, their daily things that they, they knew about, childcare, their jobs, making sure if they are going out to work, you know, as Sophie also said, you don't want to get anyone in your household sick. So you're operating constantly in survival. And so when you're operating in that part of your brain, you are going to do things very differently, right? It's going to be a different sense of, of your life because you're not, you're not operating in a way where you're like, you go to the post office and do things, get your nails done in normal ways. You're operating only to survive. We don't know about this virus. It's the unknown. The scientists come on television, there's press conferences, and something's different every single day. So when our brain is operating there, it's, it's tough to operate in that mode because we're not able to do what we need to do because we're in that mode. And so it, when we're in that, that part of our brain, we're not making the best decisions. And with trauma, you also are not doing the things that you need to do that are, that are most healthy. You're doing what you need to do to make it at that moment. And so in a prolonged manner, it may not work. So people right now with COVID-19 are doing or having coping skills or strategies that just work for that moment to get them through. And that prolonged benefit of that skill is not a good one sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, toxic stress. When we were preparing, you know, for this conversation, you, you, you spent some time, you know, discussing that. What does toxic stress look like? And, you know, what does it feel like? So I, I think it's very important that when we're dealing with any type of stress, we don't want prolonged stress. 
So think about all of the things that happen. Like I want everyone to always think about when you're feeling stress. And I often ask people, you have to be in tune with your body. So like there's something that when I used to teach a parenting class, I would tell the parents to do your NBC. And that was, and I love saying this, notice, breathe, and cope. So the first step of that is noticing. So what happens to your body, right? So noticing when you're in stress. So ladies, if you ever think about being extremely stressed, your heart might be racing. You might remember the blood's pumping harder. You might get a headache. Mm -hmm. People get ulcers, right? There's so many things. People break out in rashes. So those are sometimes are signs that your body is experiencing stress. Now that's going to happen. Stress is normal. We're going to experience stress every day. The toxic is the prolonged stress. And that is an audience that we, we might need to look at more. That traditionally happens when it comes to also children. We need to make sure that we're paying attention to, our, to the children in our lives. Mm -hmm. Because how they're experiencing this is very, very different than what we are. We're able to have this dialogue, ladies. Mm -hmm. But children can't express themselves the way that, that we might. Mm -hmm. so, so what happens is they're experiencing this trauma and they're not, every day they're feeling a feeling and they're not able to express it. So when we're dealing with toxic stress, it has a long-term impact because we're operating in that stress mode on a regular basis. And we're not, our bodies are not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. so, so that's really what comes down with to toxic stress. Venetia, if I could just ask, like, as you're talking about trauma and I'm thinking about, you know, like, for me, like I have to go to work or just the people being around coworkers or even the ones that are quarantining mm -hmm. at home with their families, like what, what types of effects can that have on the people around you with how you're handling coping with your trauma? I think what's very important, and I think we have to do this to make it through. You have to first and foremost do a check-in, that notice part of notice, breathe, and cope, the NBC, um, you have to notice what's going on with you. It's the analogy of the airplane that I always would ignore when I would fly because I wanted to just get the flying over with because I don't like flying. So the flight <laughs> attendants are, they're walking down the aisles and they have their spiel. And a part of it is if the, if the, um, the air pressure or pressure will get into the plane, um, drop the, the oxygen mask will drop low and you have to yeah. put it on your face before you help someone else. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have your air, you can't help anyone else. Even as much as we want to help our children, you have to notice what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. And so earlier when I said to you that we were operating in the survival part of our brain, right? So we're operating in this fear mode, which is totally natural at this time to feel these feelings. But when we're operating there, because of that, we are not using the part of our brain that deals with empathy. And remember, empathy is so important during this time. Because we, we have to be able to take care of each other. This is a universal method because right now we all are impacting each other, right? They talk about a lot about with this virus and community spread. We hear this word community so much. So it's important that when we think about taking care of ourselves, that ties with our taking care of our family. If you are experiencing this extreme trauma, you're operating in the survival mode, it's very challenging to take care of peop the people around you. So I would say what's important is to notice what's going on with you. Notice those days when you're not feeling your best. Notice when you might need a nap. Just notice. Notice when you need to take a deep breath, mm -hmm. right? Because caring for yourself, and that's not being selfish, helps you to care with others. And so it increases your empathy because you're able to care for yourself and then operate in the part of your brain that would help you open up and, and take care of others. So it's very important that that be a part of the whole process of dealing with our trauma is, and I'm, I'm gonna stress again, to notice. You have to, we've all slowed down, but slow down enough to notice. And it's gonna look different every single day, it is. Wow, it's a lot. Yeah. I was taking notes, how about you? <laughs> yeah, I was too, yeah. Um, one, yeah, of the things to to say, one of the things I want to ask rather mm -hmm. before we get into like coping skills and all of that, mm -hmm. is, 
you know, there are a lot of people in faith communities that are dismissive to the idea of experiencing trauma, perhaps, or, or just, you know, don't want to be in tune with their, don't want to understand the psychology of things, right? You know, sometimes there's that battle between the faith world and the way our God designed our bodies to function, right? And so what would you speak to, how would you speak to that, you know, to people who might be struggling with, you know, well, I got to stay in faith and I don't want to, I don't want to acknowledge any of that stuff because that would be, you know, uh, being contrary to my faith or just, what would you speak to, uh, to, to that, to people that might dismiss the idea that, you know, they don't have this or they're not struggling with this or that they're not battling this in any way? I, I would say first and foremost, that word that you use is the operative word, struggle. We don't like to struggle, but we are here and we're going to struggle. So anyone dismissing struggle, it, that contradicts the whole the faith conversation in itself, saying that we are devoid of struggles <laughs> because we're going to all struggle, no matter what the circumstances, no matter if it's COVID-19, whether it's flu, whether it's job loss, whether no matter what, we are here and we struggle. And the struggles <clears throat> are what increases the faith. If we've Amen. never... If we never go through anything, our faith does not get stronger. It's the whole concept of the muscle. It's the muscle. So like when you put pressure on something, it grows, it gets bigger and better. So to dismiss struggles is just really, it doesn't, for wow. me, and I, I'm not a place in a place of judgment because judgment is, I think, important to not judge people's experience, but we can dismiss that people are going to struggle and we're going to struggle in different ways. We're going to struggle differently. We're going to struggle on different days. So on Monday, Brianni's struggle might be the struggle that Sophie experiences on Wednesday, right? That's so true. everybody has a struggle in something. And that is the whole purpose is to lean on the faith, to strengthen the faith. You have to be tested. And this is the biggest test. One of the biggest tests. I don't know what life is ahead of life because everything is a day-to-day -day life right now. Everything is day -to -day. It's always day-to-day, -day, but it's especially now. So we can't dismiss struggle. We can't dismiss it and, and, and say that someone shouldn't experience it or, 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 or um, be in struggle because struggle and working through it increases our faith and what we believe in. Amen, right? Uh, Amen so is good. right. That's that so good. So good. I, I think, you know, I so have one good. more thing that I, I sure, thought about. No. <laughs> And that is, I think a lot of us feel like we've had to put our life on hold. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Priyani joked the other day and she said there's a meme going around says, saying, you know, why did we even buy a 2020 planner? You know, you know <laughs> we have, we, you know, we, had all, we have all these goals, which are still mm -hmm. going to happen. You know, we mm -hmm. have all these dreams and all this ambition for 2020 mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it's like, whoop, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. we got to put it on hold, you know, um, yeah. What, yeah. what would you speak to that? What would you speak to someone struggling, you know, thinking like, you know, they're, they're struggling in this area of wondering what's going to happen next? You know, why did I have to put my life on hold? Um, what would you, how would you speak to that? So the place that what I'm suggesting that everyone do that I think is so important is to just take each day, day by day, right? So if we, if we want to connect, let's think about what manna is, right? So we don't, oh, need, we don't need manna for tomorrow. We don't need to store it up. Right. We don't need to plan for later. We just need our manna for today. Mm, so every right. day, all we need to do is focus on today. That's really what it is because we could always have plans. I've made tons of plans before this COVID situation happened that don't come to fruition. And I just have to be in trust. So I, I, I say that each day, so if today is a day where you ask what you, you know, you know, what do I need to do? What is today going to be like? And whatever it calls for that day, do that. And right now, it, it should slow us down to just know that all we need is enough for today. We don't need to worry about what later on is gonna be. We just need enough for today. And if we have that focus, every morning when I wake up, I'm so grateful because if I wake up, like people are <clears throat> at night going to sleep asymptomatic with nothing with this virus and they're waking up with a fever so think about with this virus if you the next day 
if you are waking up and you're, you have no fever, if you can wake up and you can make breakfast, if you can wake up and you don't have to deal with some of the things, the ramifications of this virus, you can look over to the left, to the right, and your family's safe, then that really is what matters at the moment. So I, I'm just suggesting that everyone, just enough for today. Right now, where we are, we don't need to look down the line. And so those planners are great, but I think, <laughs> and they're great. I love, I love a good yeah. planner. I do, but this has changed my perspective. I am working. It doesn't mean don't think about your future because our futures are important, yeah. right? right? But really right now where we are, we just need to, let's, let's have enough for today. Good. good. That's good. good. I like that. Yeah, I like manna, that. manna and be in trust and just hold on to mm -hmm. your planners, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hold on to that planner. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, all right. So now we talked about trauma. We talked about the threat, you know, to our, to mm -hmm. our well-being. We talked about toxic stress. We talked a lot about, you know, what we're all going through, what we're all experiencing. Mm -hmm. So let's now switch gears a little bit and let's talk about, you know, how do we get through this? You know, how do we deal with it? Um, what, what would you have to say to that? Okay. So how do we deal with this? So we're going to deal with this with our coping skills, our coping strategies. And the way that I look at coping skills or coping strategies are, I think about life giving us in different situations, especially this one, lemons. So coping strategies help us make lemonade. And so lemons are what we give in, very sour lemons right now. <laughs> so we're going to transform with coping strategies from lemons to lemonade right? And the lemonade may not be the sweetest. You might like strawberries in it, but maybe this time we don't have any strawberries. So we're going to make it the best that way we know how. And so we want them to be healthy and we want them to be positive. So think of coping strategies as things that you use or methods that you use to turn your lemons into some form of lemonade. It may not be the sweetest form, the best form, the coldest lemonade, but from transforming the lemon to the lemonade, okay? So transforming that thought process so that when you're feeling overwhelmed, that these are the things that you go to. And they, the, the thing I want to bring to light is that it looks different for every single person. It does. What gets you through or how you utilize it is different for every single person. So I want to go over some coping strategies that I have here. Um, that hopefully are helpful to most people. So number one I have is, we talked about this earlier, take care of your body. So taking care of your body is that, it's not just one part, it's your mind, it's, it's the body, it's the spirit, every, take care of all of you. You are a whole person, take care of all of you. So this is inclusive of eating healthy. I know everyone I've, I've talked to, we're at home, you're hungrier than ever. I'm hungry too <laughs> when I'm not supposed to be. <laughs> so as, as much as possible, eat healthy as much as possible. You know, tonight I swapped out my bread for lettuce and I made, put my burger inside of lettuce. I mean, it didn't taste like the bread, but it, it was my way of eating healthy. That's what I would do. But that you, it, it, look, it may look different for you. So how you eat healthy, just eat healthy. Get regular exercise. Some people say they love the gym, the, gym is, the gyms are closed. It doesn't have to be a formal way of exercising. Start, do jumping jacks, do, do some squats, do any, move, just move your arms and legs, move your body, get those endorphins moving, right? Relieve some of that stress. So taking care of your body. The next part of this uh, taking care of yourself is deep breathing. And so when we're breathing and taking those deep breaths, I say in through your nose four, hold two seconds, out through your mouth, six. So I say a four, two, six method. With children, I even, if you wanna transfer this to children, because we can't forget them, I do an activity called hot chocolate breathing with them. So with hot chocolate breathing, and I do this for myself, I think it's so cool because I love the smell of chocolate. So I tell children to envision smelling a cup of hot chocolate, right? So the first thing you do is with the breathing is envision, envision a cup of, um, cocoa in front of you, right? You can all do this, no matter how old you are, but it's fun for kids. And then when you have that, hup, uh, that cup of hot cocoa, you take a deep breath in because you're smelling it. So smell your cocoa. Oh, it smells so good. 
And then it might be too hot for you to drink it. So guess what you're doing when your cocoa's too hot? You're blowing out. You're blowing. So you're That's blowing. Good. And I tell them, don't blow hard. Blow so soft because have you ever blown something in your cup too hard? And guess what happens? It goes all over the place. So I say, yeah. breathe in through your nose. Smell the chocolate because the chocolate just smells so good. And then blow. It's hot. You can't drink it. Blow it out. And we call that hot chocolate breathing. So when I, I kids I work good. with, they always remember to breathe because they, they like hot chocolate and they remember that. If that works for you as an adult, then do that, you know? So you can do the in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, four, two, um, hold, out six. If hot chocolate works, you do that. And then very importantly, get enough sleep. So this is the last part of taking care of your body, getting enough rest. I know that it's hard to sleep. You know, your sleep might be impacted because of what's going on. You may not be on a schedule. Um, a lot of people are staying up very late. So it's making them like um, not be able to, to have enough sleep because of that. So just, just making sure if you need to rest during the day, get an extra nap, whatever it is, assess your body. Remember the earlier, the notice, breathe, cope. So you're noticing what you need. You're noticing your body. If you're feeling tired, lethargic, whatever it is, breathe through, and then activate those coping skills. Notice, breathe, cope. My number two tip is take breaks from the news and social media. Social media oh, is good. great right now because it is connecting us. It's allowing us to have a platform like this. Everyone's using Zoom today. Um, people yeah. are on Facebook Live, and it's connecting us, which is great, but it's important to take mm -hmm. breaks. If we hear about this pandemic, all of the time, it's consuming. And we don't want to be consumed with anything, right? Nothing should consume us. And so it's really important that this not be a point for us to think about, brood over, watch all day long. So taking a break from the news and just disconnecting from social media. You have to be very careful with social media. Like I said, it's, it's very great right now. It's connecting us when we can't have that physical touch. So, but, so we're social distancing, but we do need social connection. So it's helping with that, but it's very overwhelming. It can also cause us to look at our situation in a way that we don't need to look at it, right? Um, because we're, we're doing what we need to do that's best for us. You know, I'll give an example. Um, recently, there was a D Nice, who's a, who's a DJ um, and a rapper from when I was a kid. He does these parties, these DJ parties, and everyone was posting about, oh, they're going to watch it, and he's, he's DJing, and it, people were dressing up from home and going to the DJ party. That didn't resonate with me because I don't listen to the music, so that wasn't for me, even though everyone was doing it. So be very careful to what you're taking in on social media and not feeling like it's something that you specifically need to do because everyone else is doing it, and that's why it's mm -hmm. important to take a break. It was nice That's for good. everyone. I love that they were connecting with him. He played music from the 80s, the 90s, and people were having fun. And when he did it the next day, they said, I'm going to get dressed up. And I saw people posting themselves dressed up. And I thought it was amazing, but it wasn't for me. And that was okay. Okay? So that, that um, taking a break is important. Avoiding hearsay and rumors. Getting When you are watching the news and reading, make, making sure your information is scientific and fact-based. There have been so many rumors about the virus. Who can't get it? Who gets it? Drink this, do this. Be careful of that. So when you're taking in your media, just make sure that it's the right type of media. My third tip is connecting with others. So you remember noticing in that notice breathing cope. So I have here when you need to, so you're assessing your need. When you need to talk with people about your concerns, to laugh, to have some sort of human connection, do it. Call someone, FaceTime someone, Zoom, have a Zoom video, do whatever you need to do. But social distancing does not mean disconnect with people. But you're right. assessing that. And I just want to assure everybody and tell you, it's okay for the time that you just want to be alone. Even though you're alone, you know, you're, you're at home, um, and I don't want to mean you're alone, but that you're at home and you're not out and about. If you need to go in your room and take some time, even away from your family, that's okay. 
when you need to call up a friend or call up a loved one or, or, or um, video chat, that's okay too. Notice and assess what you need. So connect with others when you need to. It's very important to still gather. We're gathering virtually or gathering over the phone, but gatherings are very important. Still come to, coming together. Mm -hmm. My next tip is very important, I think, is to be flexible. As I stated earlier, we have never, ever experienced anything like this. We've never, we've never gone through this. So every day is different. Every day is going to look different. So we need to be flexible. One day it was don't wear a mask. And then the next day it was they are suggesting a mask. Then do that. You, you need to be flexible with whatever the process is. If one day is, I, I read something earlier, someone saying, I'm feeling sad today. I'm feeling sad for those families. I'm feeling sad for people who are passing away and they can't have a, po a proper burial. So the woman just expressed her sadness that she felt that today. It's not an everyday thing, but that was that day. So we need to be flexible with ourselves, with our families, mm -hmm. you know, with this whole situation, right? Mm -hmm. So each day we need to do what we need to do. That's healthy. That's healthy to get through this situation, right? And your process of getting through is personal to you. As I said, it is not a one size fits all. It is a process that's personal to you. Be flexible for whatever it calls. If you get a surge of energy to read and you wanna read, do that. If there's a next day that you don't, you, I want you to exercise self-compassion and not beat yourself up because you haven't been like the masses who are cleaning out their closet and organizing things. If that's not your story, it's not. Be flexible with this process because it's a process. My, my, uh, my next and last is very important. Don't forget, no matter what we're going through, do not forget faith, hope, and love. One of the most important tools in your toolbox, and we all have a tool, uh, toolbox, and I use that term toolbox because it's something that you go to that you go in when you need these certain supplies for a certain situation. And so for this situation, the tool in our toolbox that is the best tool is your faith. Your faith. Remember that your faith is not based upon what you can see. You can't see faith. It's a belief system. I know when we watch the press conferences and hear things, it changes, as I said earlier, so much. And we don't know, like, do we believe this doctor, this scientist, they're saying this, and then, we don't know, but we need to have faith and belief of the things that we don't see, right? When we pray, right? Because prayer is a tool for so many people. Continue to do that. And then when you pray, believe. Believe in what you're praying about, mm -hmm. right? Believe in that. That's what that faith is. These, these muscles are being strengthened by this struggle, and we cannot escape this struggle. So don't forget your faith. Is what you have. Even when the doctors do not know, the scientists do not know, as I stated earlier, the president does not know. If you have faith and you believe, that is your strongest tool, right? So praying and believing, having hope for the future. And I think hope is so important. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is I today, ironically, and this is how life turns out, things come to you um, and all of my time on days of, of preparing for this, um, this conversation, I happened to use a notebook that I haven't used for something this morning. And I found this, what I wrote from a class that I had about what hope and what faith is. And so I want to talk about how hope, hope is the expectation with confidence, right? And to cherish a desired anticipation to trust in, to look for, to expect something in the future, right? That is, and I, I have an acronym written down. Hope is helping other people evolve. So we're in this and we keep hearing the language of, the, of, of hope, of other people, of you wear your mask and you, you social distance for others. So when we have hope, we're helping other people evolve. We're helping each other, right? Your hope, when you're hopeful, you, trans, you transfer that to other people. You provide that. Sure. When your children don't know what's going on, and they're, they don't know, they're not on the news the way that we are paying attention, mm -hmm. and they don't know, they see a world that's totally different than it was four weeks ago, 
you instilling hope is helping them to evolve, right? Mm -hmm. So remembering that is we, when we have hope, we expect with confidence. We expect with confidence. Then I also read that I wrote this before from a class that I had, that hope is like a star. You can only see it in the dark. So when you're in the, in the darkness, we have to see the hope because we're in this darkness and it's like a star. We only see the stars at night when it's dark. So hang on to your hope. Don't forget that faith. Don't forget the hope, right? Operate very and most importantly in love. Operate in compassion, in self-love. Operate without judgment. Everyone's process is very different. And so we are not, we're not here to judge anyone and what they're experiencing. What we're here is to instill hope <laughs> and help them evolve, help them make it through, to help each other and to support mm -hmm. each other, to, to lean on our faith because that's what we have. And our faith has to be like a tree, right? It has to be planted, it has to be strong. And this situation is, is, is definitely testing that but we're building and we're making it stronger. So don't forget, very importantly, the faith that you have, prayer, the hope that you have, and then the love. If you operate in love, you're not being judgmental. Right now, more than ever, no one needs our judgment. No one needs our self-righteousness. No one needs that. No one needs that. Well, um, I have a quick question. Um, sure. What would you say, Quanisha, um, one of the struggles that I'm finding, um, being a believer, um, is in discussions with um, other people, just in general, having a lot of conversations. Um, it's it could be hard to share realness in your struggle um, because there's like such a negative connotation if you are faith filled, if you believe in the word of God, but then you're also struggling on some days where you're afraid or um, doubt creeps in or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, it's almost like it sounds dismissive to be told, um, like, well, you just have to believe. Well, the word of God says, like, when you're going through it, like, it's not that you don't need to hear that. It's just mm -hmm. that sometimes you feel um, like judged for having a struggle. So would you say like that faith and fear can, can coexist together? I would say this about faith and fear. I do believe that they can coexist together. But I think of faith as being, it's important to have faith as a visitor, right? I'm sorry, as fear as a visitor and faith lives within you. So think about a visit. Fear is going to visit you. It's going to come and see you. It is at some point in your life, no matter what is going on. So people need mm -hmm. to keep that in mind is that fear visits and faith lives. So like, yes. I believe yes. that God knows that we're going to, to be fearful. There's so many times, but his words are, he provided comfort. There's so many times in the Bible that says, fear not. With comfort, that's a comforting thing to say, fear not. Not to like condemn. We don't need condemnation. We don't need judgment. So faith is going to, we want it to live. We're strengthening our faith, right? And fear is a visitor. It doesn't, it doesn't, we don't want fear to live within us. We don't want it to live there. It's going to visit. It's going to stop by, but mm -hmm. we have to tell it. We, we, we use all of our tools mm -hmm. so that we can tell it to go home. Fear, you got to leave. You know, that's you right. Know? You don't have to go home, but you got to get up out of here. Right? <laughs> I like that. So we, we, we have to, it's going to exist. It's going to, it's going to visit you. It's not. And to, to, for someone to dismiss that, that's not them being true. That's not a true thing. We all experience it. Um, very recently, I, I went through a situation where I drove in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. It's extremely foggy in Pottsville. I have never driven in fog that way in my whole driving career. And I was driving along fine. It was dark outside. It was early in the morning and I could not see anything. I've, I've seen fog in the valley and it's, it's, it's foggy, but this is where, where you felt like you were in a horror movie <laughs> and immediately get, fear came to visit. It did. I cried. I cried, but then because it was visiting, faith lives here. So I started to activate that faith. I talked to God the whole time. I didn't call my husband. I didn't call my mother. I could have. I could have. They would have answered the phone. 
But I, I, yeah. I activated my faith because I did not want the fear to live there. And I, I thought about like, I could be frozen in this because I almost, with my fear, I, I was in that response. And remember we said earlier, because we're designed a certain way, what happens is you, you could freeze. And I almost was frozen. I was like, I should just go on the side. I should just pull over. But then a car can't see me and a car might hit me. The, all that fear, that, it went that way. Because that fear operates in a part of our ner- nervous system that's automatic. It just started to happen. But because I wanted fear to go away and I felt that feeling, I felt all of those, I noticed everything. I've noticed my heart, the tears streams. And I, I, I talked to God my whole way through to get me through. And that was my comfort. That was my comfort. Was I scared? Was I in fear? I did, fear did stop by. So, so just understand that it's very important that we look at it from that standpoint. And I, my, other, my other suggestion is to compartmentalize your relationships. Everyone serves a different purpose in our life. And so I say compartmentalize. I want you to envision a desk and a desk at an office job. And one drawer has your paper clips and your stapler. One has a sweater because the office gets really cold. Another has files. Think about those drawers. You never mix them together. You don't put your sweater with your paper clips. You don't put your files with your sweater. So when you are assessing the relationships in your life, because, because each of us have a gift, a different gift. So when you have people in your life, compartmentalize those situations. If you know you talk to someone that's a believer, that's un, that can give you just that, what that word says, you take that and you just say, okay, that person gives me that word. If you know you can call a, a Carmen and Carmen is going to give you something, the word and something else, and you call her for that. So you compartmentalize your relationships. Don't put the sweater with the paper clips, and that's okay. So if you know you're not at this time, we're assessing what we need. That's that's every day. So if you don't, if that conversation with that person does not help, then they have to stay in their compartment. And they, I'm sure they're they're a blessing. And there's something else that they can provide, but maybe right now that's that's just not it. So compartmentalize those situations and go to who and what you need when you need it. That's good. Wow. Yeah, that's so I good. I, I can't write down enough here. I'll tell you. Wow. I'm just trying to write down every word, word over here. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, um, I, I wanted to mention too, um, the uh, coping skills that Juanisha went through, they're going to be made available in the comment section. Um, Sophie is going to be posting them. So um, I know I should have probably told you that in advance, but they're going to be made available to you. So um, I love that, Quanisha. Fear visits, faith lives. That's a good one right there. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a real good before one. Before we close, we just, we kind of wanted to uh, give an opportunity <laughs> for some real stories that might be happening, you know, in this Zoom call right now. Um, mm-hmm. I know, uh, uh, just, if you if you want to share from your personal experience something that you've experienced, maybe you've had some anxious thoughts, some hopelessness, um, if you don't mind, you know, just taking a moment to share with the group uh, what your experience has been like and how you've coped, how you've gotten through it. So this happened, and then I did this, this, and this, and the result was, you know, you got through it. So, Brianni, I think you had a story to share. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, about this, uh, no, well, today is Sunday. So, yeah, like like going on three weeks now this week. Um, it was like two Sundays ago. Um, I just... I look when I once I look back, I realized um, I just heard some negative stuff via like one of my group chats. Um, and then I had gotten some negative information about like my fiance's job and some of the stuff that was kind of going on there. Um, and it was just a lot of it was like bam, 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 like a lot in like a very maybe like in a matter of like 10, 15 minutes. And then it was right in the morning when I woke up. Um, to kind of set the scene. And I just remember like laying on my couch, like a little after, cause I was already feeling a little anxious um, more than like I, you know, I, I would really feel at all um, any day. And I went to kind of like lay back to like relax. And um, I started to feel like a tickle in my throat. And then the tickle turned into like, I just felt like my whole throat was like closing up. 
And um, it made me sit up and kind of like, you know, straighten myself out. And like, next thing I knew, like, I really felt like my whole throat was closing and like, I was no longer going to be able to breathe anymore. Um, and I was just trying to like calm myself down. Um, my kids were upstairs, but like my fiance, he was like next to me and I have a, a breathing treatment. So like next thing I knew, I'm like really sitting on the couch, like taking a full blown breathing treatment and I'm breathing and I'm calming myself down um, because I have dealt with anxiety in the past and breathing is like the number one thing that, and, and coaching myself and reminding myself of my present situation that I'm healthy. I'm okay. The situations that are happening surrounding me are not affecting me personally, even though they make me feel certain things. And I gave myself permission to feel that, but also no, I don't need to dwell on that because look at how it has me feeling right now. Obviously I could breathe. Um, if not, I would have ended up at the hospital, but um, it, it was so much mentally. And then, you know, when it was all over, um, they had left, I think, to pick up like food, like curbside food. And um, actually my mom um, had sent me this whole like faith uh, devotion thing to read. And I read that out loud, kind of listened to some worship music. And then I just gave myself permission to take a nap. And I took like a, a good two hour nap. And I felt like a whole new person when I woke up. Um, Moving forward, I control everything I listen to, everything I watch, everything I read, um, even the conversations happening around me with me going to work. I mean, everybody wants to talk about COVID-19 and sometimes they want to dwell on a lot of negative stuff that might not even all be true. I mean, like you were saying before, some of the sources people are getting things from, it's, it's not good. So I'm controlling everything I allow in because it's really detrimental to how you were saying, I need to focus on today and I need to get through today. So for me to get through today, I, there's certain things that whether they're true or not, um, I don't need to hear them. They're not going to benefit me at all. Um, I educate myself. I am taking this seriously, but I am controlling um, and filtering what I need to filter out. I, th I think, I think that's, that was, that's a fantastic example of, of what we're talking about of utilizing your coping skills. And right now, a lot of people are feeling out of control, right? So what you experienced with not being, you know, feeling like your throat was closing, that could have been a manifestation of feeling some anxiety. But I, I think it's so important that we look at what we can control in this situation. So you can control your response, right? Because you decided you made a decision and it really starts with that decision of what you're going to do, what you're going to take in. And right now with feeling like you don't know what's going on with it and everyone's talking about it, there's false information. It really is making a decision to decide what you're going to do, what is healthy and what works for you and what is good for you. And so I think Brianni, that was, that's amazing that you were able to, to do that. And these things are going to happen. Like there are going to be days when we feel this way, when we feel overwhelmed and it's so important. Those coping tools, those are so important. And coping tools also, they change. So you might add something or take something away, but you're assessing daily what you need to do for you and for your family. And I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. One of the things I've been dealing with is, um, so from last week, being at home is like a blessing to me. Like, I just love being around my kids. I have uh, my daughter, she's, you know, 20 months. And so she's like, you know, very, there's always something to do with her and she keeps <laughs> smiling. And, but with me, I realized this week, there's more of a reality check uh, about the situation, the current situation in the world, because we're safe at home. God has blessed us with a nice, comfortable home, but there was a reality check on what's happening out in the world because I was talking mm -hmm. to more people, I was connecting with more people and I was seeing fear in the people I was connecting with and seeing, uh, you know, just anxiety. And it, I almost felt like I took it in, like too much of it. And uh, I started to feel a sense of powerlessness um, in my situation, like I can't go out, like I, I can't go to the store. And that for caused me to feel anxious, you know, because I'm a doer. I usually, you know, run around. I like being places and doing things. And the reality set in that I, I can't. And so that's caused me to be anxious. One of the things that 
and I'm still working through it. So I don't have the plan as to how, you know, this is just really recent. And one of the things is usually I'm, I recharge as an introvert. So even though people may not believe that of me, cause I'm very extrovert, like glass half full type of person and bubbly, I recharge alone. Like I'm my own best friend. I like being, you know, I can go to a room and just hang out. I haven't been able to do that cause I have a full house 24 seven. I feel like I'm working 24 seven because now from being a working mom, I'm being a stay at home mom, which I've never done at to this capacity before. Um, I'm working from home. So I'm managing my children. My husband's a job. And, you know, there's just like all these different things. So I, there's no break. You know, like I don't feel like I'm getting a break. I told my husband I'm more exhausted in this last four weeks than I've ever been in my life because I feel like I'm always working, working on keeping the house up, working on the food, working on the kids, working on taking care of people, working, working. And that sense of powerlessness that, like, I don't know when it's going to change. You know, I don't know when it's going to stop. And for me, I'm like one of those people that if you don't like something in your life, change it. And I know that can be insensitive a little bit, but that's how I've always managed my life. If I don't like that, I'm going to do something about it. And I can't do anything about it. Like this is a current condition that I have no control over. And it's caused me to feel anxious. And I'm working through it. You know, my, I, I took, you know, I did my makeup today, which I have, I couldn't even talk to Carmen the other day because I was like, girl, you don't even know what it looks like. <laughs> and, you know, um, just different things. And, and, you know, it's just a sense of powerlessness that I'm, I'm working through right now and that's causing me to be anxious. So. Thank you. Thanks, um, Denise, for sharing that. Like, I think what's very important, you know, is baby steps with this whole situation. We, you know, when we first started talking, we talked about just experiencing grief, right? So it's that, that, that loss. We're in this situation. So people are out of work. Their, their freedom, they can't go come and go as they please. So there's a lot of things. There's, there's feeling like it's a traumatic experience. Their well-being is threatened. There's so much anxiety because we of the unknown and worry and there's fear and these things come and go. And that's what feelings do. They come and they go. I think it's looking, it's reframing the thinking and I'm always into reframing. And when I say reframing is I'm going to look at a picture and I'm going to figure out how can I change how I'm looking at this picture. And the changes don't always have to be gigantic. You don't know, but what you just named you are some changes of things that you have control over. You're just saying right now, I did my makeup today. That could be what that is. I clean my house when I clean. And so whatever it is, you have the control in the sense of just looking at what you need and taking small steps towards it. So let's reframe this thinking. So you said, I, it, it is a blessing to be home. You are in a warm home. You have heat. You have food, which is a blessing. So that the, the first thing that you can do is look at the little things. And you just assess, you noticed, and like the notice breathing cope, you notice what you need. You just said to all of us here that you need some time to recharge for yourself. Mm -hmm. So then that's step one right? So then now it's, how do I get that? Are you going to get the amount that you would have gotten in a normal circumstance? No, right? But you can get it in a way that works for you with this circumstance that we're in right now, right? So if we think about this, we say, today you put makeup on. Now that's today. Remember, we're going to do what we got to do just for today. What if tomorrow it's just something else? What if it's saying, I'm going to just lock the door and I'm going to spend 15 minutes. I'll put my timer on and I'm just going to sit with myself and I'm going to do whatever you want. I'm not suggesting a specific activity for 15 minutes, right? So it's taking a little bit at a, at a time and reframing the thinking. No, you do not have control over everything going on with this virus, but the little things that you can have some sort of control over the eating healthy, taking a couple of minutes to yourself. It doesn't matter. You're not going anywhere. Put makeup on. I do the, I, I made a joke last week to, I was talking with um, Carmen and um, Sophie and I said, I, and I'm going to be transparent. I do these meetings. I do online counseling and I always look nice halfway up. <laughs> I have on the bottom, I'm being, this is truth. On the bottom, I have leggings, sweatpants. So I'm telling everybody my secrets because this is an authentic conversation. So I look silly. If you walked into my room, I look silly, but I, I, I needed to look like at least halfway decent. And we, and, and Carmen joked that it's a mullet. It was like business on top party on the bottom. 
right? Because I'm really a mullet right now. I have fuzzy <laughs> socks on, but I got my earrings and my pink glasses. I got lipstick. <laughs> I did all that. Yeah. What I needed to do today. And sometimes yeah. my calls aren't this way. Sometimes my calls, I have no makeup on. So it's really mm -hmm. assessing, really being in tune to what, like, with you and what do you need and do small things at a time. You have to ask yourself and say, what, what do I need right now? What, what do I need to do? Is it eating? It, we take for granted just simply just getting up and going to the bathroom because we just, oh, I'll go in a few minutes. Take care of yourself. So whatever that is, just go, you, you have to do it. And that's what's important. And so if you look at it from that standpoint and you are doing just a little bit at a time, I love that you said, I'm working on it. This is a process. Good. This, we are not in a, a, a sprint. This virus situation is a marathon, mm. right? Yeah. Don't go too fast. You don't have to go too fast. I, I've been hearing so many things, once again, referring to social media um, about get a hobby, uh, learn something new, do this. For some, that works, right? It's like learn a new craft and yeah, but maybe in your process and the process is personal, you're not on that step yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not on that step and that's okay, right? That's all, the, the whole idea of the walk that we're on in this life, it's a walk and it's personal to you. Mm -hmm. So just take your time. So maybe weeks one through three, you, were, you couldn't figure it out and you're inching your way towards what you need to do and that's okay. Mm -hmm. There doesn't be flexible, that's one of the tips. And so just doing what you need to do a little bit at a time and that's okay there's no there's no answer to this it's a process for all of us and the process is going to look different and so it's okay that's why i told you i have my sweatpants on and that's okay i, I want to be vulnerable and say we all are like we're in this together we are all in this together in some way shape or form we are struggling um and the struggles look different but we're all in this just trying to make it through you know, I think it's funny. The other day, uh, my coping skill was, I'm not kidding. It was Redner's has these ice cream cake. <laughs> and they're, they're, they're just, there's just a whole lot in this mm. little bit of cup. And I was just like, I said it to myself. I said, this is my coping skill. And I was like, <laughs> and it was so good. And I have like, how many left? I have four more left. So we're spacing them out, you know? Um, but Thank you, Briani. Thank you, Denise, for being vulnerable and authentic mm -hmm. and real and just letting us into, you know, your situations and mm -hmm. how you're processing this. And I know that the rest of us can go me too in so many different mm -hmm. areas because we're all experiencing, you know, mm -hmm. this situation in so many different ways. It's like you're up, you're down and, and mm -hmm. uh, just thank you. Thank you for being honest. And so we want to wrap up the call. I mean, the, the Zoom with um, just everybody shares not everybody, if you want, you can, you know, what are you walking away with? Did you learn something tonight? You know, um, what did you hear that was helpful to you? Um, and anybody can share. Well, for me, I mean, I'll wrap it up later when, when we close it out in prayer, but so many good things, practical and spiritual uh, to combined. I love the notice, breathe and cope and just that it's okay. It's okay to feel how we feel and deal with it the way we deal with it. I think um, uh, that and the, and the practical side of just taking care of yourself. Uh, you mentioned, Quinesha, about eating healthy and exercising and, you know, sleeping well. And um, sometimes I feel like this has kind of pushed me into doing more sleep. And that could just be the way that I'm coping with it. And I don't really have a lot of fear except when um when i go out the door and i'm at the grocery store uh and i see the reactions from a lot of other people but there's so much in in this um in what you shared and i think sometimes you know coming from a pastoral perspective i think sometimes we do try to over spiritualize things and um you know we say well just go pray about it well maybe some people don't know how to pray and uh you know uh, it'll be okay just have faith well what does it mean to have faith you know, and I think we we do. Somebody in the in the in the conversation here mentioned about dismissing things and just assuming that people know. But, and I also love um, what you said about the manna. You know, he gave uh, gives us manna every day. He said, mm -hmm. "Give us this day, this day our daily bread." And I love that. So it was it was just wonderful. I mean, there's so much. How do you say it all? But thank you so much for just 
all that wisdom. I, I'm like over here trying to write it all down. I even dropped my phone one time. <laughs> and while I was trying to um, mute it, I, I, I took off the video. So, oh, hey, you know what? This is, this is real life, right? Amen. Yeah. But it was good. It was really, really good. Bless me tremendously. So thank you. Yeah, I can't, um, I can't tell you how awesome I think this conversation was. So much of it was such a, uh, a treasure. So many gems. Um, the faith mm -hmm. lives, fear visits was a bomb. Oh. I loved it. Yeah, it <laughs> was. Okay, loved it, loved it. <laughs> yeah, my, the best part, I, I, the part that I took out of it was um, just not being dismissive. And in my head, I took it a little uh, step further and just with our kids because we sometimes get so focused on our own emotions and feelings and um, not necessarily realize that our kids are going through different phases as well and different things. And so um, even today after service, you know, I have four kids and I had said this in the last um, call we had that um, I have two um, college students, a senior in high school, and the three are, were graduating this year. And then my son was moving into high school from eighth grade. So I sat with them today and I just said, hey, you know, tell us where you're at, like how you're feeling and things like that. And because I, I tend to be dismissive in the sense of my kids are strong. You know what I mean? They can handle anything, that kind of thing. But actually, you know, my, my 17 year old broke down in tears and she just said, you know, um, I, I, she said, you know, it's, it really stinks that, you know, proms, she's going to not, and her of all my kids, prom is a big deal. We already bought her dress. It's hanging in her closet. Aww. So, you know, just, it was, it was good to give them that opportunity. And so I'm, you know, not to go too long, but I'm just saying it's, imp from what I took from this is, you know, yeah, don't dismiss, don't forget your kids need to need you to ask how they're doing as well. And, and not just assume. Yeah. 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 I think for me, uh, when you talked about the coping skills, you talked about operate in love, compassion, and without judgment. Mm -hmm. And I think I, like Pastor Ruth, like Denise, like many of us here, you know, we're talking to people, we're interacting with people. And I have to know, I, I came to the realization that I can only handle so many calls a day. So I made the decision that, you know, I will only take two to four and four is really pushing it, you know, two to three heavy calls where I know that the person's going to need from me, which I love to give, you know, I pour into myself. And so naturally that's just going to come out. Mm -hmm. But when I'm feeling not so well, when I'm tired, I find myself more fatigued. And I think it's because this mm -hmm. is constantly doing this. And that's not, that is not normal for me. That is definitely not normal for me. I work out in the mornings you know, I try to eat as best as I, I can. Um, um, for the most part, I eat well. And, you know, I, there's a lot of supplements I take. So I'm not usually really tired, but I am very tired, like more than usual. So um, I take MCT oil. I'm like, a, mm. you know, I'm a spokesperson for MCT oil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I live off of that stuff. But anyways, I find myself tired. So when I'm tired, and I only want to take so many calls, I might take less calls. I might just do less that day and it's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Uh, it's okay. Cause I, I would never want to you know, okay. not show up as my best self for someone. So, sure. uh, so that's what I'm walking away with. You know, we're in process and, and, you know, we need to be gentle and patient and kind with ourselves first. So, um, all right. Does anybody else want to share? And then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, was somebody sorry? Oh, I, I, I really liked, um, I liked how she said like trauma is more about perception than it is reality. Um, I love that just, you know, recently just with the comparison when I think to two weeks ago to then like how I'm handling it now, um, even what you were saying about compartmentalizing like different relationships, um, like it's so easy to dwell on like the negatives, you know, I can't, mm -hmm. or I can't get my nails done or, you know, I can't go visit my friends or I can't see my family. You know, I can't see my loved one that's in a nursing home. Um, but then if, when we change the perception and we think, well, I can't see, you know, my loved one in the nursing home because it's for their safety and mm -hmm. they're healthy right now and they're okay. And they're surrounded by love and I can give them a phone call or, you know, okay. Yeah. I can't see my family, but 
thanks to technology, I can do a group face to mm-hmm. call and we can make each other laugh and live in that moment or, you know, just whatever it could be. And it's literally that simple like switch that it makes me a little bit more excited about the day um, and gives me like something to do or something to be like joyful about um, and just kind of like being intentional about it. And just what you said about compartmentalizing like friends and relationships um, and the empathy, like I think this really is just a time where where you're realizing who is does have compassion and empathy and maybe who maybe not so much or learning where you need to tweak it because there's certain friendships right now that I can talk to them about the details of things I'm going through mm-hmm. and there's other people right now that I can't yeah. not that I physically can't but because I want to be sensitive to where they're at and mm-hmm. that may uh, trigger something for them so I'm just being sensitive to what friendships and who I'm going to for what. I mean, even what I'm sharing on social media, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. it's nothing but positive because I don't want to share the wrong thing and trigger someone like maybe I've been triggered. Um, So I I love those two things that you said. And um, I, I mean, I took notes to everything and I think the key to all of this is being intentional about how Mm -hmm. we're coping with it. And I'm, I mean, these notes, I am definitely going to, um, start practicing them and um even sharing them with others you know and encouraging others as well all right well thank you so much uh Brianni, for sharing um what we're going to do now is we're going to uh just have a quick moment of prayer pastor ruth is going to bring us home with our conversation tonight and just you know uh pray and and seek god and so just everybody just um join with us as as we pray and and just seek god on on this mm. Yeah, uh, again, just thank you so much, Quinesha, for such, such, such deep wisdom. I mean, it was just uh, amazing. And, um, you know, I'm thinking about the scripture in um, Psalm 62, 1 and 2, and it talks about, you know, us not being shaken. And Mm -hmm. even though uh, in many ways, it seems like our world has been turned upside down. And it has, and it's been shaken. And thank God we have the practical side, but we also have faith. Mm -hmm. Um, just to reiterate, you know, faith lives within us. Fear may come knocking. It's, he's come knocking on my door too. Um, but I don't let him in. He mm-hmm. might come in for a little bit, but I'm going to shut the door and I'm going to, I'm a, uh, like, get out of here. I don't forget how you put it. Mm-hmm. He said, uh, uh-uh, you, you ain't come around here. You got to go. <laughs> so, but, uh, thanks so much again. And I'm just gonna, uh, just bring this home with prayer. I think everything that was said was so beautiful. I, and I, I just trust that this is going to help many, many people. Uh, So um, love you guys. And let's just pray. Father, thank you so much for these precious women of your, your daughters, Lord God. Father, I thank you for such, uh, for Quinesha. I thank you for her wealth of wisdom and character and faith and wisdom, Lord God. Thank you for her, uh, her willingness to be on this, um, zoom with with us god i I pray your blessings over all those that are watching this lord god and i pray that you would open their hearts to um when they when they view this to take notes and apply some of these deep truths because i know father that as we apply these truths and it's not just the spiritual aspect it's it's also the natural aspect lord we live in the natural realm but faith lives within and so we're so grateful tonight father and we ask your blessings upon each one that's here each one that will listen to it. We love you, God. We thank you for all that you do, all that you're going to do, and all that you've, you've been doing and will continue to do, Father. We know that seasons come and seasons go and seasons change. And so uh, we, will, we, will make through the, we will make it through, Lord. This is, uh, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And so help us to just do what, whatever we need to do to cope that it's just okay to do that. Thank you for that wisdom, Father. Thank you for this time. And we just uh, bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank, Amen. Thank you so Amen. much, ladies. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Had such a, such a great, great time with you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Good time. Um, I know, Sophie, you, have, you want to mention some of the resources that are going to be posted? Yeah, so, you know, obviously we got some great coping skills, but we also know that there are some people that just, you know, may need some additional um, counseling or just um, some extra help during this season. So we have um, a few phone numbers. 
um, that we'll be posting um, in the comment section. It'll be under my name at Sophia Estrella. That's where I'll comment. Um, we'll also attach the coping skills for not just um, for adults, but also we have some for children that we're going to post for you guys. Um, so we will have um, one of the, the, the numbers I will give you that is um, maybe helpful is the Lehigh County crisis. That one will be under there. And that's if you're feeling really just overly anxious and you and the coping skills that we mentioned today, not able to last it and you really feel like you need a little more, you can call that line and they can um, either give you more resources or even talk you through it while you're going through, um, going through whatever crisis you're going through at the moment. And that phone number is 610-782. We want two seven again. It'll be posted at the bottom in the comments. Um, we'll also be giving you um, Life Church Pastoral Cares number and some information um, um, to get in touch with Quanisha if that's an option as well. So absolutely. And just just before Sophie, I want to add all, uh, something additionally to that is that I know um, if if someone is interested in in and seeking counseling and talking with someone, but I know we are of course encouraged to do social distancing. Um, there is now telemedicine. Even if you, like, for example, have, um, if it's something, a physical symptom, like a sore throat, or you're not sure of something, so now <laughs> telemedicine exists, and it exists as, as such with counseling as well. So we do do telecounseling. I, I do do that, so that the sessions will be just the way that right now. Um, I know that it's, it's, it's not ideal to not sit in front of someone. I love the counseling environment where I get to sit with people face-to-face, but we are in an uncharted uh, time, and um, it's it's a different experience, but it's also a good experience. So just know that um, you don't have to say, "Well, I I can't go to an office." That this connection, we could still have this connection online as well. So that that's definitely an option um, for those who are concerned about not being able to get help because they can't go into someone's office. Telemedicine mm -hmm. exists. Telehealth exists. Um, so we're utilizing technology to the fullest and making it a positive experience to, have to, to support people. And, you know, I want to mention that we didn't just meet Quanisha. I didn't just meet her. I've known Quanisha for some time now, and I, I highly recommend her. Um, I send a lot of people her way. She's just a great person and a safe person, and we just love you. Thank you so much for being thank with you. us. Thank you. Love you, too. Mm, thank you. Um, absolutely. Thank you, you, know, you so Thank much. you guys for being on the, on the Zoom, and just thank you for sharing. Thank you for being real. I hope this was helpful. Um, yeah. so we'll see you next week. Have a good night. Get some rest. Um, keep checking social media for any updates with our Life Church Allentown virtual experiences and just take care, be safe, do some soul care tonight. And we love you and we look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Bye. Take care, ladies. Bye-bye.